welcome you all to my channel is this your first time of coming to my channel thanks a lot don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe so in today's tutorial we are going to making a simple video on how to cut and sew monostripe bustier pencil gown with flounce okay so we are basically going to be having our monostripe pencil gown bustier and we are going to be using like flounce in form of a pleat to design the lower part of our pencil gown so if you are interested in learning how to drag the pattern how to cut and how to sew then this video is for you what are the basic measurements required in order for you to achieve this we have your shoulder measurements bust waist hip and our gown length so our shoulder measurement is 14 14 divided by 2 we have 7 our bust is 40 40 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1 we have 11.5 our waist is 34 34 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 2 we have 11 inches our hip is 40 so 40 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1 we have 11.5 our gown length is 36 so 36 plus 2 inches for our sewing allowance we have 38 inches so these are the basic measurements required in order for you to achieve your pencil gown your mono stripe pencil gown bustier okay now join us on facebook to the designs and on instagram to the designs all the details are going to be in the description box below we also have fashion illustration on our website i'm going to go ahead and link that in the description box below if you have any question in the course of this tutorial please feel free to drop your questions in the comment section or any topic you want us to make a video on you can just drop that in the comment section and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up click on the notification bell and also subscribe to my channel so now let's move to the cutting part of this tutorial the first thing we are going to do now is we are going to go ahead and mark our basic measurement okay we'll go ahead now and mark our basic measurement shoulder to arm or nine and a half shoulder to bust 10 shoulder to under bust 14 shoulder to waist 17 inches 17 waist to upper hip 6 inches lower hip 8 inches and then we have our gown length now I have a detailed video on how to get your bust to waist waist to hip I'm going to go ahead and link that in the description box below so you can go So guys, we've gone ahead now to connect the lines together So the next thing we are going to do now is we are going to go ahead and mark our dart measurement which is four and a half So mark our dart measurement four and a half I'll go ahead now and connect my lines together So after connecting the lines together on the waistline, you will go ahead and mark half inch on both sides. On the waistline, mark half inch on both sides. So you connect it together. So this is basically what you will have. The next thing you are going to do now is you are going to go ahead and extend this dart line to your shoulder. Go ahead and extend it to your shoulder this way. So once you extend it, this is what you will have. On your shoulder line now, go ahead and mark 5 inches on your shoulder line. So you mark 5 inches on your shoulder line. Connect it to your bust point. So you connect it to your bust point this way this is what we are going to have done with that the next thing you have to do now is on your under bust mark half inch on both sides on your under bust 
so we have half inch on both sides now you go ahead and connect it to your bust point and then you connect your under bust to your waist making use of this inner part of your pattern master so you connect it this way so this is what you are going to have now and close your shoulder dart close your shoulder that you discover that this part has already done was a very pop out now the reason why this has popped up is because of the bustier effect because what we want to achieve is mono stripe bustier so this is for the mono stripe this is for the bustier area you can see that this bust region has already pop up because we've gone ahead now to close our dart. Now, once you are done with this, the next thing you are going to do now is to go ahead now and mark your basic measurements, okay? Go ahead and mark your basic measurements. Now we want to take our measurement. Our shoulder is 7 inches. We'll go ahead and mark our shoulder measurement. Our bust so it's necessary for you to close your shoulder that when taking your shoulder measurements, okay? So our bust now is 11.5. Our waist is 11 inches. Now for the hip, you have to mark your hip. You have to mark your hip on your lower hip. So our hip measurement now is 11.5. Because what we want to achieve is pairs to gown. So you go ahead and deduct one inch or two inches from your hip measurement. And then that is what you will mark on the pencil area. So we have 11.5. I'm going to go ahead now and deduct 1.5 inches. So I'll deduct 1.5 inches and then I'll mark what I have on the gown length. So once you are done with that, you go ahead now and connect the lines together. Connect the lines together. So this is what we have. Bust line to your shoulder line. Connect your bust line to your shoulder line. So we'll go ahead now and I'm making use of my arm o curve, which is also available, okay? So this is what we are going to have. Now, I know that what we want to achieve is mono stripe, but let's go ahead first and deal with this part of the gown. And then I'll explain to you how to get your mono stripe so that it's to be easy for you to achieve that. Done with that, the next thing we are going to do now is we are going to go ahead and cut this out. So guys, after cutting it out, this is what we have. So I've gone ahead now to open it up this way. So we have two pieces. Now, I'm going to make use of this upper part to get our mono stripe. Let's see what we are going to do now. We'll come back to the front block. Let's go ahead now and draft our back block because you also have your mono stripe effect at the back. And I will say that it is necessary for you to have both your front block and your back block ready so that where you want to be your off shoulder can fall at the same part i don't know if you understand that but i'm still going to like explain that so for the back block now the next thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and mark our zip allowance and i'm making use of two inches for my zip allowance so once i've done that i'll go ahead now and connect the lines together after that the next thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and mark our dart measurement which is four and a half and we'll also mark our dart measurement on the upper hip. We'll go ahead now and connect the lines together. On our waistline, we'll mark half inch on both sides. On our waistline, we'll mark half inch on both sides. And then we'll connect the lines together. Now, for the back block, we are basically going to have like a basic back block, okay? Because we are not having any bustier at the back. So once you are done with that, go ahead now and mark your shoulder measurement, which is 7 inches, your bust measurement, which is 11.5. 
our waist measurement which is 11 inches and we mark our hip measurement which is 11.5 now for the lower part of your back block the same inches you take away for the front block is what you are going to also do the same for the back block okay now we'll go ahead now and connect the lines together if you have any question in the course of this video please feel free to drop your questions okay feel free to drop your questions in the comment section now the next thing we are going to do basically is to connect our bust to our shoulder measurement okay so go ahead now and connect it together now for the back block we we'll go ahead and mark one inch for shoulder slope so i'll just indicate where we have the shoulder slope you discover that i didn't mark my neckline for the front block right so this is basically what we are going to have for the back block first now i will go ahead now and cut this out so this is what we have now for the back block i'll also go ahead and cut it out here so that we can have two pieces also for the back block this is what we have now i'll set aside this lower part of the front block of the back block rather guys i decided to show you guys how to achieve the mono stripe on the fabric okay i feel like it will be more easier to explain especially for beginners so that they can understand better okay because you can actually achieve that also on your pattern to be honest but i just thought about the front part of it like to mark the reason is because um i'm making use of this chalk and in order for you guys to see it clearly it's better when I chuck it on the front. But note that if you are doing yours, like if you are cutting yours, you have to mark at the back of your fabric. Okay. We folded our fabric into two. And this is our front block. Like the upper side of our front block, right? All you have to do now is actually very easy. It's actually very easy. All you have to do is go ahead now and place your pattern Fold your fabric into two. After that, place your pattern on your fabric this way. Turn on your fabric. And then you go ahead and cut this out. Okay? Go ahead and cut this out. Now, when you are cutting this, don't cut out the arm O. Okay? Don't cut out the arm O. And I'm going to show you guys the reason for that. So guys, after cutting it out, this is what we have. So I only went ahead to notch where my arm hole is starting and I also notched where my arm hole ends so that it will be easy for us to know where our arm hole starts and where it ends. Guys, for the back block also, we've gone ahead now to fold our fabric into two. We've placed our pattern on it and then went ahead to cut it out. Note also that I also notched where our arm hole starts and where our arm hole ends also for the back block. So the next thing we are going to do now is to get our mono stripe. Now what does mono stripe mean? It simply means that you have one part of your arm being like your basic arm and then you have the other part of your arm being off shoulder okay so it's just like a combination of your normal sleeve plus off shoulder okay this is the front block right so now we'll go ahead now and mark our neckline which is three inches so this is where we have our neckline three inches so we'll also indicate it also at the back so that by the time you open it up so this is also the neckline so go ahead now and open this up so by the time you open it up you have this part to be your neckline and you also have this as your neckline right now another thing you also need to determine is what part do you want to be your off shoulder part 
what part do you want to be your off shoulder? That is, is it your right hand side or your left hand side? Note that it totally depends on what you want. Totally depends on what you want. Now, at this part where I want to have my off shoulder, I will go ahead now and mark how many inches off do I want to take away for the off shoulder. How many inches off? do i want to take away for the off shoulder now i want to take away about five inches for the off shoulder i will mark five inches so i'm taking away five inches for my off shoulder and this is where we have our neckline and also this is where we have our neckline right so all you have to do now is to connect this your neckline your off shoulder line to your neckline so you connect it this way Can you see what we have? You connect it this way. That is, connect your neckline to where you took off as your off shoulder. Now, once you've done that now, this is where we have to be our... This is... Now, this is where we have to be our arm O. Don't forget that. You can also cross check to be sure that this is where you have your arm O, which is 9 inches. This is where you have your arm O. And for, for the arm O of off shoulder, we do, what do we usually have? We usually have a slant line. We usually have a slant line for, you can see where we have our arm O. We usually have a slant line for the arm O of off shoulder. So this is what we have. Again, we have our neckline at this point. Determine where you want to be your off shoulder. Mark where you want to be your off shoulder this way. Now, in the case where you have your arm O, and then you connect it. So you go ahead now and cut this out. This is what we have. So you can size. This is basically what we have. So you can see our normal shoulder and then we have our neckline which we took five inches off and then we have our off shoulder by this part so this is for the front block now we'll go ahead now and set this up. for the back block now you basically take away your words your two inches for zip allowance you take your two inches for your zip allowance so this is where we have our zip allowance, right? So from this point now, we'll take our neckline, which is 3 inches. We mark 3 inches for our neckline. This is our neckline. So you also go ahead now and indicate that part on the other side. So by the time you open it up, you will understand. So now, we'll go ahead now and open it up. So once we open it up, this is where we have our neckline so we have our neckline at this point and also our neckline at this point so this is our zip allowance so let's go ahead now and fold it so that we won't get confused so this is our neckline and this is where we also have our neckline now before you cut out the back block it is necessary for you to take your front block right? this is our front block right it's necessary for you to place your front block on your back block this way in order to know where you will have your normal shoulder and where you will have your off shoulder. Now, the reason is this. When we were cutting our front block this way, when we cut out our front block this way, we had... When we cut out our front block this way, we had our normal shoulder by what? By my right hand side, right? If you just cut out your back block, making use of this part also, you might not get it right. You might not get it right, to be honest. So that you don't avoid, to avoid making such mistakes, you can see that by the time you place your back block on your front block, what happened? Your normal shoulder falls 
on where your left hand side i hope you understand so when you are done with your front block make sure you place it on your back block before cutting it out if not you will end up having different sides okay so your off shoulder will fall on different sides and at the end of the day you have like a wrong dress or a wrong outfit so make sure you place it this way place it this way and then you now do what you know where you have as your normal shoulder and where you have as your off shoulder so you can just go ahead now and trace it out or just know mark it so you can see that both the neckline falls at the same part for the front block and also the back block so this part now is our normal shoulder and this part will be our off shoulder now We've done that now. The next thing we are going to do now is to mark how many inches we are taking for the off shoulder part. How many inches? So we have five inches. This is what the five inches for the off. This is the five inches for the off shoulder line. And then we have our arm O at this part. We've notched where we have our arm or earlier on. So all we have to do now is to connect it together. Just connect it together. And don't forget that for the arm or of your off shoulder, you have to have a what? A slant line. A slant line. You have to have a slant line this way. Now, the next thing you will now do now is to go ahead and connect your neckline to where you have your off shoulder. Connect your neckline to where you have your off shoulder so go ahead now and connect it this way so this is what we are going to have so this is what we are going to have so now i'll just go ahead now and cut this out after cutting it out this is what we have so you can see that we have your normal shoulder at this part of your normal shoulder you have your arm o. then we have our off shoulder this way so we also have two pieces for the back block so you take your front block now and then you place it this way you will discover that your arm your arm falls at the same part and where you have your off shoulder also falls at the same part so i hope you guys have learned a lot you feel free to drop your questions in the comment section and give this video a thumbs up so let's go ahead now and cut the lower part so guys for the lower side now or the front block we've gone ahead to fold our fabric into two we placed our pattern and then we went ahead to cut this out after cutting it out, this is what you are basically going to have, a single piece. After cutting it out, so you are going to have a single piece for the lower side, what you we will have for the full front block. This is what we are having for our full front block. Now, now let's go ahead now and cut out the bustier area. Don't forget that what we are having is mono stripe bustier. So we'll go ahead now and cut out. To cut out the darts, you have two pieces as usual. So you go ahead now and this is our front block. This is our front block, right? Now we have our center front. This is what we have for the center front. Now we'll go ahead now and cut this. It's after cutting it out, this is what we have. So we'll go ahead now and set this aside. Our block now, we've gone ahead to fold our fabric into two. We place our pattern and then we cut it out. After cutting it out, this is what we have for the back block. So for the lower side, we have two pieces. And for the upper side, we also have two pieces. Guys, now we want to achieve our off shoulder sleeve. Now, in order for you to have your off shoulder sleeve, from the basic blouse, we took away 5 inches for the basic blouse, right? That is to have our off shoulder. We took away 5 inches. 
So you go ahead now and mark the 5 inches at this point. So you mark your 5 inches this way. But because I want to fix in an elastic um, into this part, I'm going to add to my initial off shoulders, okay? So I'm adding about 3 inches extra. So this becomes my... This becomes what I'm using, but if you are not having elastic, you will use like the exact number you took away from this point. So now we took away five inches. You go ahead and mark five inches this way. You can see that uh, five inches is out of the fabric, and then you mark your arm O. So my arm O is nine and a half. This is where I have my arm O to be nine and a half. So I'll just connect it with the slant line just like the way we did for the arm o of the blouse so this will fit into the off shoulder now for this lower part now i have six inches and i'm just going to make it of nine inches because i want to fit in an elastic rubber also to this part so i will go ahead now and cut this out just one sleeve because our off shoulder is only on one side so i just folded the fabric into two just to give me like one part of the so the next thing we are going to cut out is what we are using to pleat um the upper what we are using to pleat the gown okay so now i just have a very long piece okay so i have about 120 inches long so you can either increase yours the longer or the more fabric you have the more fuller it is and the more beautiful your outcome will be so for the wideness now i have five inches for the wideness okay i have five inches for the wideness and i have about 120 inches for the length so this is what we have now so we are going to pleat it you can so now the next thing we want to do now is to go ahead and couple the upper block together. So with me here now I have my wording and I'm using the medium form of wording. So we have like the shining part and the smooth part. So I'll go ahead now and place my shining part on the fabric this way. So this is what we are going to have. So I'll go ahead now and stitch this together and also couple this up to give us a single piece. Now we've also got so we'll also go ahead now and we'll also go ahead now and couple the lining up together. And after that, we'll stitch the neckline and stitch the two sides just to basically turn it to give us like a very neat finish now we have two pieces for the back block we've gone ahead to join the upper bodies and the lower bodies to give us a single piece and you can see our neckline what it looks like you can see the neckline and join this back block and fixing our zip so that we can have a single piece for the back block once we are done with that, we'll go ahead now and place the front block on it. Make use of our bust measurements, waist measurements, and hip measurements to couple this up to give us a single piece. Now, for the sleeve, I'm going to make use of this half inch elastic. So all I have to do now is to go ahead and pass my elastic at this upper side of the sleeve and also pass my elastic at this lower side so once i'm done now to couple this up you can see what we have we have our basic gown we have where we have our shoulder and this is our off shoulder now for the sleeve where we have our off shoulder sleeve we've gone ahead also to fixing our elastic now the next thing we are going to do now is to attach our sleeve to the main dress so all you have to do now is you are just going to take this part where you have the arm o attach it this way attach it this way one side of the sleeve to one side of the dress and the other side of the sleeve to the other side of the dress so you basically just attach it this way you can see and your off shoulder part is ready so the next thing you are going to do now so 
the next thing you are going to do now is to attach this okay on the dress now i'm going to say that all you have to do is to create a design the way you like it okay just create a design the way you like it and then you go ahead and pleat it on top this way you're basically just pleating this piece on top okay of the design so you can decide that you want it to come in a round shape this way you can decide you want it to come slant just go ahead and create any design that you want with this and how you are going to do that is to place this on the fabric okay place it on the fabric and then you go ahead and pleat it so you basically just go ahead now and pleat it you can see what we have you can see how it's standing already to give you your flounce you can see how it's standing so i'll just go ahead now and pleat it create a design with it pleat it and then put it on the mannequin and show you guys what we have so basically so guys you can see our one shoulder neckline and for the lower side of the dress i went ahead to pleat it this way just to give me this shape so don't forget that you can pleat it to give you any shape or style that you want okay so this is what i was able to do just to pleat it at this lower side and let it drop down a little so i hope you enjoyed this video Give this video a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next one.